Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Pokemon Legends Arceus. So, we won't be doing that particular quest line for a little bit because we have to actually get it first. So, we'll be continuing the story in this part. So, you can reach some water Pokemon from here, which is interesting. Dude, Remoraid! I fucking love. Oh yeah, I also I love the mm -hmm. little like floaties that your your Pokemon get in water. Um, like, you ever wondered why like how Diglett can be used when you're surfing? Um, how can it be used when you're surfing, even with even with the floaties? It doesn't make sense. It just it stretches all the way up from the bottom of the ocean floor. Oh I'll be honest, I don't really give much of a shit about water Pokemon in general, but that one Pokemon that's just a school of fish that becomes a bigger fish, that's um. That, 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 that's just cursed. <laughs> I love that's one of the best Pokemon in in Sun and Moon. Like it's it's very very strong, um, because it's like its gimmick is that oh its stats are bad, Magikarp style. But instead of its stats being bad when it and it evolves into something better, it's that when it has a lot of HP, it's in the swarm mode, and if you knock it down to low HP, then it's just one fish, and it's really pathetic. That was really clever. I like that. <laughs> I also like Remoraid a lot. Um, I never really understood the like what the point was of a fish that uh, evolved into an octopus. Like I just didn't get it. But apparently, it's supposed to be like the original design makes more sense. Where this one was a gun, and Octillery was more of like a cannon. Bazoo yeah, it's yeah, bazooka or something. But I just that's always been one of my favorite underrated Pokemon because it's. It's like it's one of the rare ones from Johto. Like I think it it's a swarm Pokemon, so you need to get a phone call for it to appear. So you don't get it very often. I do agree with Lewis though in that water is like the most boring type, um, <laughs> even more boring than like normal, which is the boring type. Um, specifically, well, it's there in the in the rules. <laughs> I don't I don't necessarily mean even in the context of it being like a boring type mechanically or anything. I just don't care about fish. Uh. <laughs> well, that's, that's part of why they're boring is, is that I feel like water Pokemon overlap with each other a lot more than other types of Pokemon. Like there's so many different like fish Pokemon. Well, I mean, it, it seems like that because that's what aquatic life is like. But yeah. like, I'm sure if there is some super intelligent sentient race of dolphins, they think all of our, all of our bipedal and quadrupedal animals look the same too. Uh, the other thing, though, is is that in terms of it's always been weird having a. It, I always feel like you are required to have a water type Pokemon on your team in the early games back when you needed HMs to do stuff because Surf was just mandatory. Um, but that also meant it felt like Grass types were like unplayable because you didn't want to have too much overlapping. And water types and grass types do most of the same stuff. Um, you're mostly using them against uh, ground and rock types. And the big difference is, is that water types good against fire and grass is good against water. Um, and it's like, okay, well, they're, they're basically the same, but the water type you need. So I just never really played much with grass types ever <laughs> uh, growing up at all. Not that grass is my favorite type ever. Uh, it's just, I don't know. How long does it take for a day and night to cycle in this game? Like 10, 15 minutes, I think. Eh. Uh, not too long, honestly. Although it does that thing in um, games that I'm not a big fan of, where instead of like a softer version of the music playing at night, there's just no music playing at night. Um, which... Yeah, I'd rather there be music playing at all times. Yeah, um, I that I'm just not a fan of the you know the no. I, I get it; it's for the ambiance, but it it just doesn't do man for me to not I, have any music at night. You know what my favorite thing about Final Fantasy XIV is, unironically, is the music attached to the three main towns, because the track itself is extremely long they know you're going to they know you're going to spend a fair amount of time in that town especially toward the beginning of the game so they made a yeah. long track but there's a night version and a day version of the long track <laughs> um so you know sometimes it's just like it's really it's really damn good music it's really damn long music it's got a lot of different parts to it like what's the name of the town in final fantasy 
14? I would argue, well, but there's, th- there's, there's three main city states. There's not like one central town. Yeah, but what's the name of that track? Limsa, Lominsa, Olda, and Gridania. I can't spell any of them. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, lick my balls. You, you <laughs> can spell. You can actually spell all three of them if you stop and think about how their syllables are pronounced, because the spelling is not. I already don't remember what their names. Are. Limsa, uh, no, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. spell. All right, so, Limsa, unfortunately, the audience no is not going to be able to see Limsa. this. I want you to try and spell in the. Brain scratch Discord right now. What you think Limsa Lominsa is well, spelled? No, like I already that. looked it up. I already, I already figured. All right, Olda. Oh yeah, you're right. This is a seven minute long track. Damn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the music is long. It's it's complex. It's got a lot of different moods in it, and then it's got a calmer nighttime track. The result is that if you that if you happen to be in town for uh, roughly lo- long enough t- for the day and night to cycle. The track itself may only have time to loop maybe twice before the before the day night cycle shift happens. And then you get a completely different you get a completely different version of the same track. You know, sorry, like uh, even after uh, Arm Reborn is celebrating its 10th anniversary oh, uh, in the next couple of weeks at the time of recording this. Uh I would still even argue to this day after all the expansions, it still has some of the best field themes. Oh, yeah. Um Night and daytime. Uh, it just It's weird for me to think it's 10 years old because I remember when the game was new. Um, like, not even... When, I remember when Final Fantasy fourteen was new, but I also remember when A Realm Reborn was new. Because we did that. I was one of the first pieces of sponsored content we ever did, and Lewis got a free fucking PS4 for recording the game. Uh, the, the beginning and end of my life. <laughs> yeah, that was... That was um. It was for Heaven's Word. Uh, we got it for Heaven's Word because oh, that was the first expansion. Yeah, out. It, it was for Heaven's Word. I'm pretty sure. Um, I had I had a I had a great time getting into the game. Um, it was it, it was it was a fun experience. Of course, since then, my my opinion on the game has become more complicated than it was in that video. Mostly because I've sampled more. MMORPGs from different periods of time and come to appreciate the older style more than the newer one. Um, but, you know. How dare your, does your opinion change over time, Lewis? It's, it's, it's life, you know. I, I, I've, I have come to I have come to somewhat resent the World of Warcraft style of MMORPGs for, for taking over the entire say that genre. That <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I under I understand, you know, World of Warcraft is popular, but I I mean I understand, you know, like being a little bit um you know, apprehensive of the fact that because World of Warcraft was popular, it was the only type of RPG MMO that could now exist. Well, you know? yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of the deal. It's just like, you know, um ooh that looked uh, like it would hurt because I, I mean i see a lot of that with um I, I mean i'm not a first person shooter player but a lot of first person shooters were uh really annoyed that come you know the the late 2000s and mid, early to mid-2010s everything that every, was call every, of duty you know you everything became different. everything became a really linear sort of um spectacle shooter um and, and, and even just things like mechanics like every game needed to have the halo and call of duty um insta regen health you know you can regen have normal health the the, the two bi- the three big things were the linearity the, the the insta regen health and the two the two weapon system which people would argue was more realistic but it was really just there because they wanted games to be console friendly and you don't have a, a numerical keypad buttons on a console controller so there was no quick swapping and nobody had invented the weapon wheel yet, except Bioware. <laughs> uh, let's see. But yeah, no, I just, I understand because a lot of the time, you know, there will be a huge shift in how a genre plays out. Yeah. And it'll feel like, oh, and I mean, that's not necessarily anything against, you know, World of Warcraft. It's or... it's it's not so much that the World of Warcraft style is bad in and of itself. It's more that like for for a long time, and to a, to an extent still now, it was it, it was pretty much it's pretty much the basis that all games in that genre are built on. So every game has to use the goddamn Holy Trinity of DPS, tank, 
and healer. Every game needs to have rotations. Every game needs to have um, the same general flow of zones and the same general flow of content. Every game needs to have a party finder that finds your party for you because nobody fucking has time to socialize, social, socialize organically anymore. What are you talking about? And uh, it, it's just like... Mm. Yeah, I'm just, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, it, it must be really, really hard to try to make a game that goes against that mold because yeah. you have to convince higher ups that people will play this thing that's so different than what everybody else is doing. Well, the, th the thing is, like, the old style RPGs generally lean too far in the other direction. So I'd like to see a modern developer take some of those concepts and iterate on them in a way that isn't quite so hardcore and no hardcore annoying. Because this, the kind of shit I'm talking about is like an old school EverQuest and games of that nature. If a party raided a dungeon, then all the monsters in that dungeon would be dead for a period of time. All the loot inside that dungeon would be gone for a period of time. You would not I mean, be that's able to... a cool system, but just not one that works once you have more than whatever number of players playing the game. And, and honestly, it'd be more than like a couple hundred. That's the actually. thing. That's the thing. The player community would have to like set up a system outside the dungeon that scheduled everyone who wanted to get into that dungeon for their turn at the dungeon. And and like... Oh, wait, that's something that they did? Is like, that's something oh, that they did, yeah. All you that, have an appointment for the dungeon at 4 o'clock p.m., okay. <laughs> all that clunky-ass shit in Sword Art Online that people say is bad game design was actually just standard for MMOs at the time the damn story was written, so fuck you all. But, like... <laughs> 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 the um, Interesting hill to die on. <laughs> yeah, I got anyway, killed by a togepi on that hill. <laughs> but, like, okay, so... What the... Did the Togepi run away? Yes. Yeah. Oh. It, it just gave Ryan a smooch and then left. It just disappeared. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I'd like to see some of the stuff from old MMORPGs iterated on like more in modern games, but they they but the game design tends to favor that sort of uh, I I'm saying low effort, but what I really mean is low effort on the part of the players, <laughs> not low effort on the part of the developers. Uh, they want to favor that low effort, highly accessible sort of jump in and play um, mentality in MMORPGs rather than the you have to schedule specific hours of your day the same way you would when setting up a D&D &D session sort of mentality that older MMORPGs tr tended to favor. Um, I feel like in many ways it's just a matter of they need to somebody needs to be brave enough to do something different and then that needs to be successful uh for more options to be made because like everything tried to be like mario until sonic came out um and then <laughs> everything tried to be like sonic after until you know the next big thing came out and nowadays platformers are a fairly healthy and diverse genre you know i feel like something similar yeah, could happen with MMOs. But at some point. but like in in the case of shooters, to bring it back to that, the answer was for someone to finally be brave enough to do the old thing again. And uh, I don't think that's going to work for MMORPGs because the old thing has its own share of problems. Well, that was one of the big things about Doom because I remember Doom twenty sixteen was a huge game for like it going back to many old, but it didn't just go back to old. Um, stuff it also updated that old stuff so that it didn't feel like you were playing a game from 1994 you know yeah, it felt but, like you were playing a modern game with classic sensibilities yeah but in the but in the case of doom going back to old school doom and games in that style isn't necessarily hard because it's an inherently very fun style of game developers had just forgotten about how fun it could be and how to make it <laughs> you know <laughs> until they started making them again um with MMORPGs, the situation is more complicated because the old, the old style MMORPGs don't necessarily have many specific inherent strengths that should be replicated. So it would be a lot more like designing a Resident Evil Two remake and comparing that to Resident Evil One and Two back in the day. It would still be very different, but it would have a lot of the core strengths, at least in my view. 
that's that's my my hypothetical headcanon of what kind of game of what this kind of game would be if someone decided to make one now. But because we live in 2023 and because the MMO genre is a genre that lives and dies uh, based on how many players it can it can gain and maintain. Well, yeah, that's kind of one of the things about an MMO is I feel MMOs are less of a genre and it's more just a specific game that's popular. Like it's like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy 14 are the MMOs and there's not many other options. There are a lot of other options. There're just not a lot of other popular options. Um yeah, like... but it's a community-based game though is also the thing. So like you if you don't have the community, the game does not exist. Um, well, yeah, but Or well, it's not as good as it could be. But like there's there, there's more to that than just numbers. The actual community has to be active at all levels of the game. So it needs to gain and maintain its player base because if it can't gain new players, it's not going to be able to make the game interesting for those early level players. If it can't maintain its player base, the players it does have are just going to fall off at some point. But, but the thing is, like, you know, I really, really I really, really lay the lay the blame at the feet of the money problem more than the community problem, because a lot of the cash flow in these games comes from emphasizing the grind and things to make the grind easier or cosmetics and emphasizing how many funky little wacky things you can make for the player to wear so that, you know. You're playing an MMORPG in this fantasy world, but who wants to immerse themselves in the world? I'd rather wear a mascot helmet and walk around in my underpants. Uh, Listen, fuck you. Everybody should wear the King Slime hat. Um, it's required. <laughs> King Slime hat stays on during sex. <laughs> it's the best when your frame rate is at a specific cap and you're riding on an airship because that shit just unapologetically jiggles yeah, it does. like a wind chime yeah it does uh, my, my point is that the thing the things that are popular in the mmorpg genre are are outright counterintuitive to the kind of game that i would like to see and that's just sad you know it's like it's the kind of stuff that actively makes designers not want to make the kind of game that i want and that's just unfortunate It's funny, though, because Bethesda kind of tried to make the sort of game that I wanted, but uh, that was that was Fallout 76. And and oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like in concept, I like the idea of Fallout 76. I do. It's just, you know, so they... <laughs> fun fact about Fallout 76. And this was something that I, I was learning um, recently with, you know, Twitter being the way it is. Um it's um fallout 76 was terrible at launch um, oh yes so the story goes and so what they did was they didn't try to make the game better but they made a paid service you could pay extra to get on so that like you have your own little private group and you get like a little badge that says oh i paid extra money for uh, fallout 76 and like twitter blue subscriptions all it did was make people mock you for spending extra money on something pointless. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think they did eventually add more to Fallout 76, but it was definitely not an Elder Scrolls Online situation either. It seems like it was too little too late from what too, I can tell. Too little too yeah, late. Yeah, it's like, isn't the, damage yeah. Ar isn't the damage already way down at that point? I mean, point? The, Elder I the Elder Scrolls Online, which is uh, a pretty good MMORPG now, uh, was, was pretty flawed at launch. And now it's 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 being it's being actively expanded every fucking Tuesday, it feels like. So, yeah, they turned that one around. I mean, uh, honestly, I, th I feel like the fact that if I had a nickel for every major MMORPG that was a disaster at launch and then turned around and bit and was massively successful, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot. But it's weird that it happened twice. <laughs> um, because like jokes aside the idea that like you can turn around such a massive blunder that was final fantasy 14's initial launch and make it into one of the most successful games of all time um is well, majorly impressive to me both both final fantasy and the elder scrolls have the kind of brand recognition that enables someone to tank that sort of damage and come out you know 
you know, not uh, on the correct side of critical condition. Um, so, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's not as, it's not as surprising in those two cases as you might think, but I think for, for square specifically considering 1.0 came out after third, I mean, how do what did 13 do? financially it sold it sold like well release. enough i mean they wouldn't have yeah. made two sequels to it if it didn't sell well um hold on let yeah. me look up lifetime sales of final fantasy 13 well i mean look you don't final fantasy 13 wouldn't have killed final fantasy either way there there are 12 good games before that you know okay so it sold 1.7 million copies in japan in 2009 uh final fantasy 13 became the fastest tell fastest selling title in the history of the series as of 2017 game has sold 7 million copies worldwide on consoles yeah so it, it did it did well enough but the thing is is uh, that i'm gonna blow the, your mind like, right here a yeah. lot of those a lot of those purchase numbers are people buying the game just to see how bad it was yeah and not to <laughs> mention you know <laughs> something can make money and still not be like the transformers movies made money that doesn't mean that, yeah. that they're good or they <laughs> have, they're good that, or even that they had a good reputation because like by the times transformers three or four came out nobody was saying that they were good movies they were just still doing well i don't know why but they were well i mean with the michael bay movies um there there is a fan base for them there are people who enjoy watching them uh, we, we yeah because sometimes all you need is just giant cgi robots fighting each other and that's we're, enough. we're we're up here sitting on on the social media pile and we get we get like a constant feed on people's opinions in the nerd sphere but you know most people aren't and they don't get all of that garbage they just go out yeah and they're see a just movie like an cool. airplane yeah. like an airplane movie or yeah a, and God bless him for it. <laughs> so, yeah. 